this is Wendy Lightheart. In this video, we're going to learn how to divide radical expressions. So we have a rule for dividing radicals that's very similar to the rule we have for multiplying radicals. This says that if the nth root of a and the nth root of b are both real numbers, and b is not equal to zero, then the nth root of a divided by the nth root of b can be rewritten as the nth root of a divided by b. So we can take an expression that has two separate radicals separated by division and rewrite it as a single radical, and then we have division between the radicands underneath that radical sign. And so we'll be using this equation both directions, similar to when we had our rule for multiplying radicals. Sometimes we will start with two separate radicals and we want to rewrite it as a single radical, or sometimes we will start with a single radical and we want to split it up into two separate radicals. Okay, so let's look at some examples. Here we want to simplify the square root of 72x to the 7th divided by the square root of 8x. And we're going to assume that all the variables here represent positive real numbers. That way we don't have to worry about absolute value signs since this is an even root. So since these are two separate radicals, and you'll notice that neither one of these are perfect squares, so you'll see when we simplify this why it's going to be um, an advantage for us to rewrite this using the rule. We're going to rewrite this as a single square root over the division of 72x to the 7th over 8x. And notice that this rational expression that's underneath that single square root sign can be simplified. The 72 divided by 8 is 9, and x to the 7th divided by x is x to the 6th. So this is why it was helpful for us to rewrite this expression using the rule, because now we can simplify this into a simpler radical. And now we're going to simplify this radical so notice that 9 is a perfect square, and x to the 6th is also a perfect square. So we can take the square root of those separately using the other rule we had for multiplication. And the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of x to the 6th is x cubed, so we get a final answer of 3x cubed. Okay, let's look at another example. Here we have a single square root sign over a quotient of 45y to the 7th divided by 16. And again, we're going to assume all the variables represent positive real numbers. And so now we're going to use that rule again to rewrite the expression. Since it started out as a single square root over a quotient, we're going to rewrite this using the rule as the quotient of separate square root over 45y to the 7th and a separate square root over 16. Now this will be good for us because notice that 16 is a perfect square, so that eventually is going to simplify. And we're going to also need to simplify 45y to the 7th, the square root of that. And while they're not perfect squares, we can factor out the perfect square factors of those. So 9 is a perfect square factor of 45, so we'll split 45 apart into 9 times 5. And y to the 6 would be the biggest perfect square factor of y to the 7. And so we'll split that apart as y to the 6 times y. And so now we have these three perfect squares, 9, y to the 6, and 16. And we can take the square root of them separately using our rule we had for multiplication. And so we'll end up with 3y cubed times the square root of 5y all over 4. And that is because the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of y to the 6 is y cubed, and the square root of 16 is 4. All right, let's look at another example. This time we're going to use a, see a fourth root, and this is a single fourth root of our quotient. So it would be very similar to the last one we did, except for instead of looking at a square root, we're going to be looking at a fourth root. So we'll first use the rule to rewrite the expression. Since it started out as a single fourth root, we'll split it apart into two fourth roots, a fourth root of the numerator of that quotient, so the fourth root of 32x to the 15th on top, a 
and then the fourth root of the denominator of y to the eighth. So just like before, we're gonna we're gonna want to simplify these radicals. So we need to identify the perfect fourth powers this time and split them apart. So 16 is the biggest fourth power of 32. It's a factor, so we'll split the 32 apart into 16 times 2. And x to the 12th would be the biggest perfect fourth power of x to the 15th. So we'll split that x to the 15th apart into x to the 12th times x cubed. And then, of course, y to the 8th is a perfect power of 4 because 8 is divisible by 4. So we've identified and separated out all of our perfect fourth powers. And we're going to take the fourth root of all those perfect fourth powers. And so that will simplify our radicals. And on the top, since um, 2 to the fourth is 16, the fourth root of 16 is equal to 2. And with the x to the 12th, remember we divide that exponent by the index of 4. So 12 divided by 4 is 3. So that's why we get x cubed for the fourth root of x to the 12th. And the fourth root of y to the 8th, we divide the 8 by 4 to get 2, so that will become y squared. And of course, the 2 and the x cubed were not perfect fourth powers, so those will stay underneath that fourth root sign. And that is our final answer. So that's it for today.